what's going on? So I'm kind of excited to talk today. It's not going to be a real long podcast, but it's something that's been in the back of my mind now for a few weeks. And uh, it's fascinating to me. And that to me, there's absolutely zero downside to this exercise. Um, and I, I don't know that it has to center 100% on meditation, but that's how the studies that we uh, just kind of double checked to make sure that we weren't going to spew out anything false. Um, we're done on there based on like collective consciousness and um, group meditation, right? Yeah. And I read about it months ago in a book called the divine matrix. Mm -hmm. And so, and who recommended that book to you, by the way, because I had a conversation with Jacob about it and told him he should read it. And he's like, I think, Marty recommended that to me, but I'm not sure. It was someone, it came up a number of times in one of a Facebook group that I belong to that's run by Julie Riesler. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So yeah. um, the the basic concept and theory is, is that 1%. Um, I think it's the square root of 1%. It, yeah, that we're a little foggy on that. I, the first time, two times I heard about it, it was 1%. Uh, the square root of one percent is even way freaking smaller, smaller, which is that Beautiful. much more exciting. <laughs> but um, it's it it talks about like collective consciousness and um, where a group with that is either one percent or the square root of one percent in a community um, did a meditation where they focused on love, peace. Um, Basically, like trans transcendental meditation was one of them, but I think probably any meditation where you're. And even if you even if you think you suck at meditation, if you were to just wake up in the morning, close your eyes, and maybe set the intention to be peaceful, loving, and share that with the community, I th I think it would have an impact. So I don't even know if you need to set the intention to share it. I think it just automatically goes out of you. It could, yeah. So there's that too. But true. why not set the intention like nice. to share it? Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's nothing wrong with sharing that kind of stuff. I like to keep my peace and happiness. You're greedy with your peace and happiness. Um, <laughs> but the study that's so incredible and the thing that's most fascinating about it and what I want to challenge all of our listeners to do to try to is that crime rate, then they've done several studies and backed up the original study um, that crime rate has been reduced from anywhere from 21 to 28%. Murder goes down like, in your community and we're not talking about everybody in the community doing this we're talking about one percent or the square root of one percent that had that drastic change on um their their surroundings by by that collective thought and um you know i've i've always been a giant proponent of collective thought and energy and all of that kind of thing because i think um i'm sure like my devout born again or you know, specific religious friends might debate me on this, but it doesn't really matter in my mind because it to, this, the purpose is the same. So if you have a congregation of people all in one room and they're praying with all their hearts for somebody and then a miracle happens, to me, it's kind of the same thing as setting an intention and doing tapping into that same collective consciousness where um, you're putting those thoughts, those good, that good energy, that, that, um, this is as woo High as frequency. Yeah, this is as woo as I get, by the way. But you're pushing all of that out into the universe, and and that it catches on and it travels. And there's no, like I said, there's zero downside to that. Why I can't think of one reason why we all wouldn't give this a shot. Or you know, best case scenario, worst case scenario, one percent, which is still plenty, or, or the, the square, square root of one percent. Because Sam's going to keep correcting me this whole entire podcast. All right, let's just say every time you say 1% that I'm also going to say square root of 1% and I won't say it again. Everybody else can just think it too because yeah. you've said it enough now. Yes. Somebody needs to look that up so we know the exact, I got to find that. We just read it. It, it, was, it wasn't clear to me though. I know, it was a little vague. It said 17,025 people, which is the equivalent to the square root of 1% of the U.S. population, but it didn't say that crime rate went down 28 percent in the entire united states either it was that community yeah i don't know okay that's the part where you know what it doesn't matter 
anybody listening, this is our bigger love, not so perfect couple challenge of it's our challenge, first challenge of the year, or so isn't it? No, we did a we did a sex May or something. What are the challenges that we done? I don't we know. do any challenges this year? I don't know if we've done any challenges, but why not? And those of you that meditate, um, this is this is a no-brainer. Just stick it in there with the other stuff that you're doing. And those of you that don't, before you get out of bed, just close your eyes, focus really hard on that. And for me, it's uh, peace, love, positive energy. Um, these are the kind of things I'm kind of just focusing on channeling, if you will. And can but, I interview you a little bit about this? Sure. Because I've been meditating religiously for years. And I'm, I'm the person that would stand up in the past and raise my hand and say, I suck at meditation. I never do it, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't. So but I just barely you, started again. But you believe in it and you tell other people to do it. I do. And I, and I, even though I don't sit down and get into a meditative state and that kind of thing, I, I still, even over the course of last year, I'll still just breathe, you know, breathing can be meditation and set an intention. It's all meditative. So I, yeah, I think don't get so hung up on the how and whether you're doing it right or any of that stuff. It doesn't matter. So when did you start doing it? When I started doing the peace and love and push that out ever since I first heard it two weeks ago. The med And so you've been meditating every day too for two weeks. I haven't been doing it. Yes, actually, I've put that, I've done that conscious thought every day for the last two weeks. Nice. And but what? I've sat down and made um, a focused effort on meditating probably half of that time. <laughs> so I, I'll get three days in a row and then I'll miss a day or two and then I'll get another couple of days. And so. Yeah, and be gentle with yourself. You're just getting mm -hmm. started. And yep. I feel like the more you do it, the better you end up feeling. What well, the last two days we've got construction workers that are out in my meditation spot or near it. And I don't, I feel like I'm, so I'm being self-conscious and not just choosing a new spot. I used it as an excuse not to do it. But You just do it in bed like I do. Well, then I get a boner and want to have sex. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That Whoopsie. happened this morning. <laughs> so much for meditation. Well, maybe we could just have sex and then you can meditate. That's what I did this morning. Yeah. There you go. That would work. Sounds really awesome, really. And have you noticed anything, any changes in yourself? in the last two weeks or in our relationship in the last two weeks that could have been as a result of this meditation? Mm, if, you're, if you're trying to say that my meditation has caused your menopause, um, I'm not going to let you use that as an excuse. But that's not, as far as our relationship. At all. <laughs> <laughs> um, in my menopause, I'm not sure it's happening still. Yeah. Sam Sam thinks she's peri or pre menopause or perimenopause about seven or eight times a year. It seems like for the yeah, last I get, five years. I get hot flashes and yeah, weird things happen with my menstruation. Anyway, you asked the question about whether I notice any changes in myself or in um, our relationship. I don't know so much about the relationship because we've done a lot of work on that anyway, um, and we've 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 been doing some remodeling and there's definitely been some disagreements along those lines. Um, but I wouldn't attribute my ability to get around and over those disagreements as far as having anything directly to do with the meditation, maybe setting the intention of being loving or being the most loving person in the room or giving that a, a shot, which is super hard to remember all day long, but um, maybe that it's helps a little bit. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's true. You shouldn't shouldn't set the intention to be the most. You don't have to be. You don't say shouldn't. It's just competitive. It's um, that's what gets you. If that's what motivates you, then that's fine. I'm just making I, an observation. I agree with you, though. Judgment. I don't think I don't think I should set a benchmark as like, ha I was more loving than everybody here today. Um, well, you can't really measure it anyway. So. Well, that's not loving in and of itself. You're not as loving as me. <laughs> hey. hey, hey. <laughs> But um, just that I, I think it's um, as far as my own personal self, so the relationship, not so much, but for my personal self, I do feel more of a, um, a steady grounding, if you will. In other words, I've been even sitting at my desk, even though I've, if I did meditate or didn't meditate, I just breathe in you know, 10 deep breaths, super deep breaths, hold deep breaths. 
just the the practice of breathing deeply you know trying to get back into the meditation and setting a few intentions and just you know calming my mind and doing all of that i i definitely feel a more um i just feel more grounded and more consistent with my mood cool if that is an answer well and you know i've had a few heated discussions as you mentioned and actually i think your recovery from those you know and your decisions about the outcome have happened quicker. Yeah. So with and decisively and we've come to good resolutions or not resolutions. Like, you know, we had that big conversation that one night and the conclusion was I'm out. we agreed to <laughs> we agreed to disagree and that's okay. Yeah. And I think before I don't know if we can, we can't attribute it all to the meditation, but I'm sure it's helped. Okay. Well, that to me, all that matters is, is that I lower my own personal stress level. Um, and I, I help our current surroundings. I help the energy in our house and I help the energy in our neighborhood and potentially help the energy in our community and our state kind of goes back to our whole meaning of life, which is, you know, Love. yep. More love there is, I guarantee, there's no way that people are. Not love the feeling, love the action. Yeah. And most crime isn't usually love-centered. I am going to make that judgment. Yeah. So. Mm, yeah. They might, the person who's committing the crime might make the argument that it was. Give me an example. I love this woman so much I'm going to kill her lover. Yeah, that's jealousy, insecurity. Uh, but the person who's, who's making that judgment would, you know, again, like if you could walk in someone else's shoes. Well, that's the person that probably needs a little coaching. <laughs> <laughs> we have lots of people we could connect that person with. Yeah. I think people, I, well, I've said this many times. I don't think people do bad things because they're bad people. I think they do things that we judge as bad. And if we had walked in their shoes and could think their thoughts, we would realize they weren't trying to do bad things. They were trying to do something to create their own happiness. Okay, fair enough. Wouldn't you say, though, that taking somebody's life is more of a anger? I mean, I would say that anger is more behind that, even if you're doing it in the name of love. What if, what if somebody came in here and tried to kill me? or was trying to harm me in some way and you killed them. That's fight or flight, self-defense. There's nothing you can do about it. That comes from love. Okay, but that's all right, that's not a crime. We're talking about crime rates. You were talking about killing somebody and I'm saying so that's self-defense. It's justified. If you push enough love, somebody if we push enough, 28% of the time, that guy would never even come into the house to kill you because we changed the community by meditating and pushing love and, and collective thought. Cool. So we would reduce the likelihood of that by, you know, 20, 20 to 30%. Yeah. So that's the, that's the point of this. That's the point of what I'm talking about, woman. Yeah. You're getting pretty woo in your old age. This collective that's not consciousness. That woo. It's, I've thought of it, I've thought of it all along. It make, it, it's what makes every, I used to be one of those people that would get annoyed when somebody started going God, Jesus, you know, whoever on me, and I'd be like, oh, that's religion. Um, Buddha. Well, not even, yeah, Muhammad. just, as soon as you get linear on, you know, with belief in the past, for me, I would, I would basically push back or go out and see if I could find something wrong with it. Me you know? too. I we live like in Utah. Also. There's a ton of, um, we have a ton of family that are Mormons. The Mormon religion is very predominant here. And um, it's, it's a religion that I spent significant part of my life, you know, vehemently disagreeing with and saying, Oh, this is, this doesn't make sense. And that doesn't make sense. And, you know, that kind of stuff. So I've studied a lot of different religions. I went to a Catholic high school. I, I mean, it, and I've, we had that we had a couple of different books on religion. I used to be just totally intrigued by it, but I never really I never really bought into and followed one into a very linear path. So I would get turned off when people would start talking about that. But 
the one thing that happened to me a few years ago was understanding that it's all connected and it didn't matter if you believe in Jesus, you don't believe in Jesus. If you believe in Buddha or you believe in Muhammad, if you, you know, are a born again Christian, um, if what does matter? Love and having, um, and kindness, you know, the kinds of things that make a difference in people's lives. That's what matters. Which all those religions. Absolutely. Teach. 100%. All of those, all of those enlightened beings who came to earth have taught that. And you can throw the fanaticism at me if you want, but it, that's a very small percentage and uh, it doesn't matter. So, um, yeah. Anyway, and then if you even talk about being not religious, but super spiritual and believing in um energy or there's a movie called the secret and there's there's all kinds of stuff out there that there's little bits and pieces that are the same across all of it so those are the parts i choose to focus on yeah i like that cool and this is a good time to be focusing on this stuff you know with covid and all the racial tension that still is yeah i did want to bring that up because bubbling and burning and there's a lot of there's a lot of judgment, hate, anger. Um, it's then you got a presidential election that's probably one of the most polarizing. Well, as polarizing as the last one, but definitely polarizing because as soon as somebody comes out and says they're for Trump, they, I mean, you, you people get physically angry in the room. <laughs> well, same with if you say you're against Trump then somebody else gets physically angry yeah whatever it doesn't matter who you're for who you're against it's just let's stick with the easy part just be loving you know um well and be okay with somebody else's opinion and decision yep it's theirs you, you don't have, have to agree somebody's yeah. trying to take your opinion or your decision away um is that does that can that even happen i don't think it can i don't think so but then there's a mask thing too. People, some people are of, of a very firm opinion that they shouldn't wear those, and other people are of a very firm opinion, opinion that those people are irresponsible. I mean, there's just divisiveness everywhere. So, um, love your neighbors anyway. Yeah. Love your neighbors if they're doing things different than you, if they look different than you, if they act different than you, you can still love them. Yep. And the point and the bringing it all back home, the drop the mic moment is that let's be the one percent or the square root of one percent <laughs> but let's be the difference it doesn't take hardly anybody that's such a small number so what do you guys think let's do it let's do it that was very motivating love <laughs> bye everybody hope you're having hope you have a wonderful week <laughs>